So welcome back to the third video in my series about learning how to foil. So today's video is going to be going over the components of the Slingshot Hydrofoil as they come out the box and how you can fix these together to vary the position of the mast and the fuselage into the three different positions, the A, the B and the C position. Then I want to talk a little bit about the maintenance of the foil, especially if you're going to be using it in seawater. And then finally wrap up with how I attach my foil to my board, which is the starboard hypernut, and one of the ways that I get a central foot strap in that position by utilising one of uh, the uh, hydrofoil um, bolts uh, to secure that foot strap as well as the foil to the board. So let's go. Here we have the slingshot hydrofoil system out of the box. What's great, it has this great quick start guide which if you flick through, it goes through all the different components and how to put these different components together into three different positions. Straight out of the box, we also have this lovely bag, which is great for protecting the foil. Here we can see the rear wing with two holes, which are used to fixate the rear wing onto the fuselage. This is also the front wing, as we can see here. This is the part that allows the fuselage to attach. We can see some goals here for fixating the screws. If we look at the foil wing itself, it's lovely. This is the 76 centimeter one. And if we look at the shape here, we can see some of that interesting dynamic wing shape as it comes goes down and then back up. Quite an important feature of this foil is the turned down uh, edges of the foil. So there's no direct parts that are pointing out that can essentially jab you or get stuck upon. One of the advantages, like I said, is that it won't hit you, but one of the disadvantages, as we can see if we turn the foil over, is that you are likely to have some scratches and hit some stones at some point or ground because you might not always know how deep the water is that you're in. And one of the places that can get damaged, again, is these down pointed foil wings. As you can see here, I've done some rough and ready repairs to this, uh, but it's, not become, it's never that actually badly damaged, but it's definitely something to bear in mind. Then here we move over, we can see this is the mast. This is what fix, so fixates the fuselage to the board itself. So here we can see it like so. We can see this in the upright position. You can always tell because you can see the writing in the upright position. If we were to look at the foil head on, we can see this is the front because it's the fatter end. And then this is the rear of the mask because it's the thinner end. Okay. And this comes also in a lovely case, which helps protect it. Here we have the fuselage. So this is what attaches the front and back wings to the mast. We can see that this is the top of the fuselage because there's no writing and there's no countersunk uh, edges. If we flip this over, what we can start to see is the easy labelling of the system. Here, unfortunately, you can see I've used quite a few times to get a little bit of the rub off, but it's still pretty apparent, and you can see the countersunk nature of where we're going to put the screws in. So that helps orientate you. This is the bottom, and this is the top of the fuselage. If we were to go now to the different small components of the, uh, the system, we have the pedestal here with these two 40 millimeter bolts that help fixate it to the mast. I haven't used this as yet, unfortunately, but I'm hoping to get some use of it soon. What I have been using a lot though, is this deep tuttle adapter. So here we can see it here. Okay, so we have four holes for this one. What we have is two holes for these rather long, um, you can see here, uh, 75 millimeter bolts, and they go through like so. And if we flip it over, we can see where these come out. And this is what attaches the deep tuttle adapter to the mast. I'll show you how that's made in a little bit. So if we take these out, these larger, quite thick, um, 45 millimeter bolts is attaches through here and these is what fix the whole hydrofoil 
to the board itself. Okay, so they go in like so, and you get a rather large oh, Allen key here that is used to help screw those in. Okay. And that comes with the kit as well. If we move a bit further along, what we can see here is a cap that essentially is utilized in the top of the wing. So that pops through there, but when the fuselage is there, it does not. And this is fixated by these smaller uh, 23 millimeter screws. Um, and this just is to prevent there being a hole there when uh, the mast is in the B or the Z position. And then we also have this very small uh, 25 millimeter screw, and this is used to fix that front wing on the fuselage in place. It's not really meant to take much force, it just holds it in place. If you're using the fuselage in the A position, you can substitute these smaller 23 millimeter screws with these 45 millimeter screws we can see here, and they simply attach the mast to the uh, fuselage and the foil in that A position. If you're using uh, the foil in uh, or the mast in the B or C position, you use these 50 millimeter countersunk screws. Okay. Then you have this is the shim that goes at the back of the fuselage, and which is what the rear wing sits upon, like so. And then we have some just smaller. Uh, 30 millimeter screws which hold this in place. In terms of the other parts that come, you get three different magnetic Allen keys. So we have a six, a five, and a four millimeter. Uh, you also get the big one, like I said, but that is just for fixating those big bolts to attach the hydrofoil to the board. And you also get some marine grease and PTFE or plumber's tape. So one of the things to bear in mind is that with the marine grease, you want to be greasing your screws regularly. They're titanium. Please try not to lose these. Keep these in a secure position because they're expensive to replace. And um, you, in general, uh, what you use the plumber's tape for is just wrapping around, once the uh, screws have been greased, around the screw like so to create a nice single layer and then you can break that off. So if we we're going to attach the sliding plate to the mast, so we would take the sliding plate, what we can see here is the thin end where it tapers off and then a slightly thicker end where it tapers off. We go, we get our mast, we make sure it's in the upright position by looking and seeing that the writing is upright. We put it down. We orientate ourselves so we can see that this is the thin backer part, this is the thicker front part, and then we just match the thin to thin, thick to the thick, and we can see that the pedestal sits nice and firmly, on like so. We take these 45 millimeter screws and we attach them onto the top, like so. We just screw it in a little, the same on the other side, you screw it in a little, and then we take our appropriate Allen key and we screw them on. So this position here, you can pop it down, and then finally we can see that the pedestal is nice and secure onto the mast. So I'm just going to show you how to attach the mast to the deep tuttle adapter. So we get the mast, we look at it, we make sure it's in the upright position because we see the writing's in the upright position. We pop it down like so. And then looking from the top down, making sure that we have the back and the front identified, we can take the deep tuttle adapter and we can see that this is the thin end this is a slightly thicker end, and we place that so it slides and attaches like so. We then take the long screws that I described earlier on, put one in through 
that middle position, we attach the other one. So again, it sits in that middle position. We take the appropriate Allen key and we simply start to screw them in. And you make sure it's nice and tight. Do the same on the other side. You go around and get sure and make sure it's nice and tight. And we can put this back down. And then if we look so we can see that the screws are in and that's nicely secure. Let's construct the foil in the A position. So the next stage we're going to attach the front wing and the rear wing together using the fuselage. Okay, so we take our fuselage and we can see here and just to double check we can see this is a top because there isn't any writing and it's flat and the holes aren't countersunk when we rotate it over again we can see that we start to get countersunk holes and we can start to see the writing here for the A uh, sorry for the C the B and the A positions so we want this facing down and then we simply take the front we insert the foil all the way till you hear a bit of a thud at the end and then if we flip the foil over we can see some positions here for where the screws go so these would be where we're going to fuse the mast and the fuselage together and this countersunk hole here is for the smaller 25 millimeter countersunk screw that we have simply pop this in here There we go, we can start to see that goes in. We then take our smallest four millimeter Allen key and fix this. We make sure it's nice and tight. Take this out. And what we can do here is that this isn't really meant to bear much load or force, but it just helps secure the foil in place for us. We can then pop this down and then we can think about the rear wing. For the rear wing, we're going to need our shim and we can hold this onto the rear of the foil. We can then take our rear wing. If we look underneath, we can see a grooved portion which is going to fit into the groove here of the shim. We place this on like so, and we line up the holes. We then take our smaller 30 millimeter countersunk screws. So we can see them here, 30 millimeters. We place them in and we start to screw down. Then we take our smallest Allen key Fixate. So if we're putting it in the A position, the mast, we want to take the two of the slightly longer 45 millimeter fuselage bolts. These take the five millimeter Allen key. So if we simply take our foil like so, we can take our mast, we take the end that is still open, and if we were to look carefully at the four position, we can see this is the slightly more open end, this is the end that kind of tapers down. So we can then look at our foil, we can see that this is the front position because it's fatter, this is the back position because it's thinner, and then we simply slide it in till it clicks like so. And we can see if we look sideways, how that fits. And then I recommend that you put something on the floor, like so, and then we can simply put the foil upside down. 
we take our 45mm screws, we screw them in, and then we take our Allen key and we start to fixate. Although be a bit careful because this can get a little bit tight and we keep going. And once that's fixed, we can see that we get the foil in the A position here. And if we were to flip it over, we can see again that we have the two screws here with the fixation screw here. And we can see position B here clearly still and position C here. So we've got it in the A position. If we want to use the foil in the B and C position, one thing we've got to do is we've got to plug up this gap at the top here that remained from where we'd fixate it in the A. So what we do for this is we take our cap, we place it in like so, make sure it's firm, flip over the foil, we take our smaller 23 millimeter screw that you can see here, we place it in like so, and we put in like so. And then we take our six millimeter wrench and making sure that we hold and get a good grip on here, we then screw it in and secure it like so. For these ones, we want to be really careful and actually get it quite tight because there's not much gear or play how much you screw in. So I've actually lost a screw because I didn't screw it in enough at this point. So make sure you've got that really, really nice and firm. And we can see now that we have this covered. So if we look at the fuselage underneath, we can see that the B position is here. Fuselage is painting, pointing the right way. You can see the arrow here for the B pointing this way. So that's the front of the foil. So we want to now fixate the foil onto here. So what I tend to do is I take the mast, make sure we've got the top and the bottom orientated. We put this down on the ground. I get my uh, screws ready, which are the 50 millimeter countersunk screws, have them nearby to hand, and they take the slightly thicker Allen key. So I get my foil. I look at where the B position is, get the front of the mast facing in line with the arrow. I place it over like so. Line up the holes, take my countersunk screws that we can see here, start to screw them in just to hold it in place. And then I take my five millimeter Allen key and then start to secure it. Get that nice and secure. And then what we can see is we have the foil now, nice and snugly in the B position. And we can see one of the main differences here for the B position is that the mast is further back and this, where we put the covering, was where the A position was originally. And that's now now nice and smooth and level. So if we want to put the foil or the mast, I should say, in the C position, it's a slightly more complicated process. What I've done is I've left it together so we can just see how this works. But we can see here that the B position is here with the arrow pointing forward. But if we look here, we see the C position is here, but the arrow is pointing the other direction. And essentially the arrow, whenever you want to use it in a position, should always be pointing at where the front foil is. Okay, so let's take this apart because we're gonna have to switch this fuselage around to get it in the C position. So I'll start by taking off the rear wing. And then we take off the front wing. Finally, we 
take out the fixing screw. So we can then detach like so, make sure we've got a good grip because our small cover also comes out. So what we need to do is we can see the fuselage here with the different positions here. It's been rubbed away because a bit of use, but there's the A position with the little arrow. Again, here's the B position with the little arrow. Now we want to get it orientated such that the C position you can see here is with the arrow pointing forward, making sure that we keep the countersunk end on the underneath, the flat part on top. We do countersunk on the bottom, like so. We take our small 23 millimeter fixing screw just so we can secure the front wing in place. Again, we want to recover, so we take our cover, put it around, we slot it in like so, holding as we do, then we put in our smaller fixing screws here, the 23 millimeters. We take our six millimeter wrench, fix those in place. Like so, and we make sure that these are tight. Like I said before, I lost one of these by not doing it tight enough and they're very expensive to replace. And then we can see that we've got this all secure. We've got the C position here, just double checking with the little arrow pointing forward. So we're all good to fix the rear wing in place. And again, this is the same process. We take the shim, we attach it so that we can see that the, that part of this shim is on top, so there we go, like so. We then take our rear wing, again, making sure that we can see the small area that's cut out. This fits into a slightly raised part here, like so. We line up the holes, make sure that everything's stable. We take our 30 millimeter screws, again, them in like so. Our four mil wrench. This becomes quite something you do quite often is drop Allen keys so make sure you're in an area where you can easily see anything that you drop. And again now we can see we have remade our foil with the rear wing here up to the front wing and all we've done is we flipped the fuselage 180 degrees such that the C position now is here. We'll put the mast on and you can see how this has changed the position of the front foil and brought it even further forward than if it was in the A, as you can see here, or B positions. Okay, so like we did before, we take our mast, we pop it on the floor, we use the same uh, 50 millimeter countersunk screws that we did for the B position. We make sure that we know where the front of our mast is, which is the fatter end. We align that with the board. We balance a little bit, make sure we get this through. It's usually such hard to balance here because you maybe gotta take a bit more weight and then we fix it as best we can. Lift this up and we can put the foil back down. And if we look now, what we can see is that in the C position, the mast is ever so slightly further backwards than it would have been in the B position. And again, here is the mast covering, which reveals where the A position would have been.
What's great about uh, the casings that you get out of the box is that you can use the mask protector and attach it on like this. So you're not gonna be hitting anything with a bare aluminum mask. And then we can actually take the bottom of the bag, open it up like so. We can place the foil in. Like so. Getting the bag attached. Like so. And we have the foil all ready to go and all nicely protected in its covering. So here I'm going to show you how we put the foil in the board. We're going to need a screwdriver, uh, a large allen key, and two of the larger bolts which are fitted by the allen key. And the screwdriver is for the foot strap that we here, see here at the top if you want to fix it into the middle position. So we walk over to the board, we flip it over so the top is facing down towards the ground. We can see the deep tuttle box at the back with the two sliding parts when if we put the sliding head either side. So we want to line the front of the foil to the nose of the board. I like to keep the bag on here for the foil, makes things a bit easier to handle. We line up the tuttle box with the tuttle adapter of the foil and we just put it in so it starts to fit. And then to secure it, we wiggle it back and forwards until we can see the tuttle adapters plate there lines up flush with the board. At this point, we want to gently turn the board over, rest the nose of the board onto the ground alongside the foil. This is why it's nice to keep the bag on. And we can see the two holes for fixing the foil to the board. So here we take one of the bolts and the Allen key and we want to secure that bolt into the screw hole in the foil. So you can just see how I'm just slowly fixing it in and securing it. If you didn't want a back foot strap, you would just take the other bolt and repeat that process there. However, I want to put a middle foot strap in, so I take my foot strap. It's got one foot strap screw at the front there, I'm pointing out. And at the back, I've widened the hole slightly with a screwdriver and also with this bolt forcing it through with the Allen key earlier on. So at this point, I take both the Allen key and the screwdriver and I want to then secure the screw into the furthest hole because I like a nice and wide foot strap. Now I want to point out it's very important to use the screw supplied with the starboard foot straps to do this. I didn't like the starboard foot straps themselves, but the screws are slightly wider than your normal foot strap screw. If you don't use them, you'll find that your foot strap can pop out of the board. And that happened to me several times when I use just the normal R and R R R D screw. So you use the starboard foot strap screws that come with the board. So to get the bolt through, I just line up with a hole um, and then I start to line it up with a hole where it's going to go through to attach the foil and then drive it through with a bit of force with the Allen key. And I keep turning. It'll take a little while, but it'll start to get through that hole at the back. At this point, sometimes you can get stuck on the neoprene at the bottom of your foot strap. All you need to do is just push it around until the bottom of the bolt starts to stick through. And then we start to drive it down into that, hopefully getting that engagement before it's securely in the foil. I really want to stipulate again that you should use the screws for the foot straps supplied with the starboard foot straps that come with a board. I don't know why, but they look ever so slightly thicker than a normal foot strap screw, even if it's half a millimetre, a millimetre, but it makes a huge difference to securing the foot strap in the board. So here you can see that the bolt is engaged. I've securely fixed it in that position. And now I have this nice and secure back foot strap. So thanks very much for watching. I hope you found that useful. I just wanted to break down the different components of the slingshot hydrofoilers that have come out the box and how those different components relate to how you can make the foil with the mast and there's three different positions, the A, the B and the C. 
It's pretty intuitive once you get used to it and you've done it a couple of times. I'd also just like to mention a little bit about maintenance. Every time, every third to fourth time you take the foil out, especially if it's in seawater, I'd recommend taking it apart and re-greasing it with the lanolin and using the PTFE tape to cover up that grease. It's just going to prevent any of the parts of the foil fusing. Uh, it's also another fact to bear in mind is if you're not going to be either using the foil for maybe a number of weeks, it might be worth taking it apart as well and doing the same thing just to prevent that fusing together. Hopefully also you've seen a little bit about how it fits into the board and I'll be going a little bit in, in more detail about the board. As you may have seen from the video, it has lots of different foot strap positions uh, and they are great and they're very versatile and allows you to do a lot with that board. Uh, but some of the ways that you can kind of make those foot strap combinations is not so intuitive. So I'll go into that in a future video. So thank you for taking the time to watch this and I'll see you soon. Mm -hmm.